It is time to go racing again. Get set. Heat 3A of the Unlimiteds coming your way here at Seafair. Let's take a look at this lineup. Dave Vilwalk in the Elstrom Elam Plus in the inside lane. Grandview on the lake won a heat just a few moments ago. Then Northwest Express, Leland Unlimited, Jones Racing, and Buffalo Federal Savings is on the outside. Have not run, I don't believe, this weekend, as I remember. That is the setup. Here is the lake, and the boats are starting to make their way out on the water. We'll get some fabulous pictures for you. We're coming up on five minutes before the start of this unlimited heat 3A. Heat 3A of the Chevy Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Budweiser, the great American lager, and is presented for Seafair by the Tulalip Resort Casino, number one place to stay and play. All right, here we go. The boats are starting to take their positions in the water. Let us find out after the Comcast port. Of course, conditions, 78 degrees and a, a light six mile an hour breeze. A little bit of chop on this water. Let's find out who these drivers are now from inside out in heat 3A. And the number one team, Dave Vilwak and the Elam boat. Chip, they are set for perhaps another first place win. And all he really needs to do is get a first or a second, and he's in the final, and right now that's all he cares about. And guard, you're down there in the pits. They've tweaked that boat a little bit, have they? Yeah, they have. They put a new gearbox in it because they like the lane they're in, and they're going go with that lower ratio, and we'll see what happens. All right, the grand view on the lake. Jimmy King, surprising with his piston-powered boat, gets a win in the second heat, Michael. And if he shows the same kind of power that he had in that previous heat this time, he's going to give Dave a, a bit to work with. The U-17, U.S. Northwest Express, Kip Brown, Nate and those guys, Chip have kind of wound it out a little bit better each time. They are. Kip said earlier today that he's never won a heat. I think this one's going to be a hard one for him to do that. Greg Hopp in the Mirage Boats jumps out of his unlimited light, jumps into the unlimited, and uh, it's going to be a warm day for him today and a long day, Mike. He got pinched in the north turn in that previous heat and uh, didn't really get to show what he's got. He may have something left uh, to show us this time. He needs the points desperately. And Jenny Hogan has been following those in the Mirage Boat pit. Jenny? Yeah, this is a new boat here. This is the Muscatel I've been following, and they've been making changes all morning to this boat. They've got a new skid on it, they said, because it wasn't running right before, so we'll see how it runs in this one, Steve. All right, Jones Racing Team David Williams, the museum curator who's racing against the big boys. That's right, Steve. He can curate your museum, or he can drive your unlimited hydroplane. Your choice. And the fastest forensic psychologist in the history of the world is Dr. Ken Muscatel, but they're still going to be working on that one in the Buffalo Federal Boat. No, I think they're actually out on the water, are they not? They, they are, are indeed, and it's a delight to see them out here. Oh, we just had a spin. Uh, Kip Brown just spinned in the corner there. He's trying to get it back again. But Ken Muscatel is there in his brand new, beautiful, beautiful Husky Purple Boat. Gotta love it. In fact, he is swinging around that corner, and there is Kim Brown trying to relight the fire. How difficult is that, Chip? It's hard, and you saw a little bit of fire coming out of that back, and that means he's on the start fuel. He's putting fuel on again. Why he spun out, though, we don't know. It's really, kind of it's kind of amazing. They weren't certainly up to racing speed at that point. No, but actually, these boats are very hard to drive at under 130 miles an hour. These boats are designed to, to operate and steer well at speed. At slow, they handle like a 1950 school bus. They're terrible. <laughs> and you've driven both, so you know. I've driven both. I've ridden it. <laughs> so we should have some pretty good racing here. Dave Milwaukee has not run from the inside lane yet today. He's going to have lane number one. This is a good time for him to try it out. There's really not too much of a threat to him here. If Alberto was here, he'd be putting a lot more effort. This is a good experiment for him to see where he wants to be in the final. You know, we've heard from all the drivers, Mike and Chip. We haven't heard from you guys. Mike, when you look at this, you don't don't see guys slowing down, going off plane, jockeying for position. What do you think? How do you like it? I like it. I wish they could do that without having to do it in a formula basis and just actually have to never go slower than 130 miles an hour and still grab the lanes and put the suspense back in the starting sequence that isn't there with this process. But we're getting cleaner starts now. The fans, I think, can understand what's going on. And uh, what's going on right at the moment is Jimmy King's got to catch up with the rest of those guys. All right, Michael. How about the fastest lap, Pat O'Day? Well, Jack in the Box is congratulating this heat. The Elstrom family, that Ballard Bullet, the Elam, 
plus. Dave Vilwalk in the wheel, he qualified for this heat and for the entire weekend at 154.3 miles an hour. Now, Jack in the Box is the place where you can get anything on the menu any time of the day. Thanks, Jack in the Box, and thank you, Mike Fitzsimmons. And we go up to the uh, north turn to get ready for our starting charge and trailing, as you can see from Chopper 7. Uh, we're looking at that boat for you watching or listening on uh, KJR. He's going to get into that second slot just exactly where he is supposed to be, so he will be a factor in this start. Jimmy King will as they come around and just a tad on the early yeah. side in the upper corner right now. Just a, a little off speed in terms of uh, their timing. Jimmy King is going to come out with a good head of steam right now, and he's going to test Dave Vilwalk on the inside. Vilwalk and the all Elstrom on the inside. Grandview, the U3 in lane two, the 17 in lane number three. They come across the line. Dr. Ken Muscatel makes a very good start, but the Elam has the speed as they go down into the first corner. Right next to him, though, is that turbocharged Allison. I hope that turbocharged Allison just settles in and takes the second. Those old World War II aircraft engines, they don't take a lot of stress. So I hope he just settles down takes the second and get find himself in the final. Off the corner now and halfway down the back shoot already. It's Dave Vilwaki in the Elstrom Elam Plus. Jimmy King is keeping the pressure on. He's in the middle of the roost tail. Okay. We've lost the nine boat. David Williams is down now in the lower corner. That's going to create a bit of an obstacle as the boats come down for the second time. Uh, right now, Dave Vilwak is up uh, coming out of the uh, turn number two up by the Lake Washington floating bridge and he comes down to take the, uh, the flag for the end of lap number one. He is uh, keeping a lead on the Turbo Allison boats, and uh, both of them are pretty fast. Now, Bill Long turned it at 146, and Jimmy King said 142 miles an hour on the first lap. So that's not slouch in Japan hour. They're still working it. There's a lap penalty on the 100, but I want the viewers at home to kind of do a little uh, research here. Watch the Elam boat when you get a close shot of it, and then in the next heat, watch the Oberta boat, and you decide which boat has the best boat ride, how steady it is, because that may be the key to the winning the final. Well, Elam is is deliberately set to run a little bit loose and get some air under it. And he's running through traffic now. The nine boat got restarted and he's passing it right now in that upper corner. David Williams getting out of the way wide. And uh, here comes Dave Vilwalk now. It's all his here. And uh, I think that uh, Jimmy King took your advice, uh, Chip, and he's going to pick up the 300 points there. He's had a good couple of heats if he does that, and that's going to give him sufficient to be a, a player in the final heat as well by making some decent choices as far as lane selection will be concerned. One more time around now for Dave Vilwak in the Elston family's Elam Plus. Turn the last lap at 143. He must be thinking elapsed time as it relates to the last race of the day in lane position. Indeed, Frank and Chip, I don't think he likes that inside lane very much. I don't think a lot of people do, but he hate to give it away because because if somebody can make it work, make it work, it's really hard to catch it from the outside. You know, we talk about how old that old turbocharged Allison is. These turbines are old motors too. These engines were built in the late 50s, so these are not brand new off-the-shelf motors either. Jimmy King has slipped to the inside trying to make up some ground there, but it isn't going to be enough. Checkered flag is out for the Elstrom Elam plus Dave Villock picks up another uh, victory here and moves a little closer to the uh, old boy Alberto in national points. Second, Jimmy King, another good run for uh, the Cooper team in that Allison Turbo and a distant third place now. Oh, no, it would be a third place. This is the boat down a lap, but that would be the uh, the uh, Jones Racing. No, Limited Unlimited, or Leland Unlimited is number three, and then number four is uh, Kip Brown. Well, I have to say the Mirage boat that you were just looking at there, that's the 100. We did hear they got a lap penalty. I don't know if it's for a jump gun or another infraction, but Greg Hopp has got a lap penalty. And Dr. Ken Muscatel is going to get a checkered flag for the first time this year, and that feels good to him on Lake Washington. No doubt he had a tough time uh, getting into the race with basically the referee's option that allowed him in. He didn't actually qualify for the race but it's a delight to see him uh, out there. By the way, uh, the starting sequence, they towed the, one of the starting buoys down about 30 feet and replaced it just a few minutes I ago, that. which uh, essentially gives us a, a, a straighter line, may also compensate for that second. I think the story of that heat, Mike, was that Vilwalk drove the orange Elam as hard as he could, but Jimmy King stayed with him. What a day this is for the Cooper boat, the number three, the Grandview Lakes Resort. Absolutely kept the pressure on him. David Williams, though, finishes ahead of Greg Hopp here, having uh, been chased because David went down and was was able to get refired again. And of course, with the lap penalty for Mr. Hopp, 
Uh, he tried to catch it but didn't succeed in doing that. So David Williams gets scored fourth overall in the race and fifth will go uh, to the Mirage Boats, the Leland Unlimited. The boat you're looking at there with Dave Vilwalk and Dave Vilwalk's now going to get out of the boat, go into the truck, and he's going to think long and hard about which lane he wants for the final because he's tried one, two, and I believe three. So he's got some selection to do. And with his speed, and you've been in a boat like that, what would you choose, Jim? That's a tough question. I'm going to go back to my uh, icy road because I think there's going to be a lot of luck involved. Luck as to is the water going to be smooth when you get to that first corner in your lane? And again, it's just luck. Uh, Chip, I got a question. Is that going to be if you are tied in points, will that be a lapse time, best of laps time uh, for lane position in the final of the day? Exactly. If both boats have the same number of points, they go to a lapse time for the race, and that will give that person the selection first. And well, then Alberto's got a big job to do when they come out here on the next seat because I got to tell you, Bill Walk was just smoking out there. He was. And he's tried one, two, and four now. He didn't like four. I don't think he liked one very much. Two seems to be the optimum for him, Jim. Yeah, but if you're Dave Milwaukee, it's are you that confident to let uh, Steve David inside of you? That's going to be a tough decision, and I hope when they get to ask him, uh, when we got to talk to him out of the boat, I hope they put that question to him. What lane if he had to pick right now? I don't know if I could believe his answer, though. Well, this presumes, of course, that Steve David's going to get plenty of points to be able to make a choice like that. Of course, we'll have to see if that happens in the next heat. The only thing of significance I want to mention right now as they come into the pits is the maiden voyage of Ken Muscatel's new Buffalo Federal Savings has just been completed. Not a pretty boat. Didn't win anything, but he's pretty and he's running and he says the future is bright. You know, Ken Muscatel is a forensic psychologist, and so there you see a forensic psychologist in a purple boat with green flames on the side. So that's a bit of a contradiction. Well, you know that they all get the most counseling anyway. So Exactly. Uh, this is a great opportunity for Ken because it's a testing session, and I think that's why they let him in. I think Ken said, look, I'm not going to race anybody. It's a brand new boat. Let me get on the race course and shake its legs a little bit and see what we got. I think that was a good decision. Yep. So there you see the boats coming into the pits. We'll attempt to grab one of the uh, drivers. In fact, we have one right now with Guard Swanson. Guard? All right, thanks, Raves. And everybody wants to know, you've, you've raced the inside right then. You had lane two. Which lane do you like? If you had to pick one right now, which one would you pick? Uh, lane one or two will work. Um, you know, that was, we could get the boat through there really good. And, you know, so that, that works for us. Uh, that's what we're just using as a little test setup, see how we're doing. So we'll go look at how many RPMs we ran and stuff like that. But. You know, that's what's fun about this format. You just got to keep race, racing your way in, you know, and who gets the inside will be decided in the next heat. So it's just, it's a, it's a race. It's a boat race the whole time. Could you notice a, a big difference between the lanes? Uh, lane one and two? Yeah. Uh, it just depends. You know, if the wind's blowing 30 miles or 20 miles an hour at the end of the day here, it's hard telling which will be best, but we'll see. So what do you do in the final? Is it just guesswork then? You got to rely on the wind. What, what do you do? What, 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 what do you factor in when you're going to pick a lane for the final? Uh, we're just going to try to win. <laughs> that makes it easy, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, just go out there and try to win. No, we, we'll look at who's got the lane choice, and and uh, you know if somebody does have over us, and uh, and just make that decision at the last second. And real quick, you switched out your gearbox. I know you guys got out front early. Was that the whole strategy there? Yeah, we just wanted to run conservative the last heat, just get some points, get in the next heat, don't get in any problems with violations and stuff like that and then try to run hard this next this heat and we did that so we're just kind of setting the stage for the final didn't seem so conservative you're busting in there like 140 142 143 and up yeah it was this pretty it was pretty rough so we had to run hard all right thank you very much guys back to you well greg hop we found out did get a penalty and it was not a jump start it was a lane infraction and they also fined him 150 dollars and 150 points so that virtually takes him out of the final greg hop again the only driver here in both an unlimited light and an unlimited and we'll see more of greg hop today we presume meantime jenny is down in the pits with one dr ken muscatel i am with the doctor here hey ken at new boat how did she run uh, it's really going to be a fast boat. I just hope to do Ron Jones Jr. justice here. He's standing right next to me. This is a state-of-the-art part. It's gorgeous. And for the first time, this is only the third time in the water. I took a fourth place. I'm pretty happy. I stayed on the outside for safety's sake, but uh, to make sure that everything, this is what they wanted me to do. But uh, hey, fourth. 
I'll take it. And the purple and the flames? Uh, I'm Well, maybe I'm just flaming purple. What can I tell you? <laughs> Don't quote me on that one. <laughs> I think a few people heard that. P.S. Okay, back to you guys. <laughs> well, I, I, I just won't even touch it. He's yeah, flaming. I'm, I'm That's staying for away sure. from He's it. always been flaming. Yeah. You, you know, and th there is a guy, you talk about a guy who loves the sport and has, you know, had not a great deal of success in his time. Yeah, well, you know, we talk about the 60 years of Seafair. I think Ken Muscatel actually drove in every Seafair race for the last 60 years. So that's quite an accomplishment. Well, it really is, and we're so happy for Ken. We have some unofficial results of this Heat 3A of the Unlimited. We'll show those to you. There's Dave Vilwak and the Elam Plus team. Grandview on the lake, the piston-powered boat. Kind of held it together, as Chip said they should. The Leland Unlimited, the Northwest Express, Buffalo Federal Savings, and there's the Jones Racing Team, David Williams, at the controls. We'll talk more racing, but that was Heat 3A. Heat 3A of the Chevy Cup at Seafair has been brought to you by Budweiser, the great American lager. Congratulations to Dave Vilwak and the Alstrom Elam Plus, the Geico photo finish winner of Heat 3A, 15 minutes. Could save you 15% on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit us at geico.com. Here you take a look at the log boom once again. Pretty pictures on a pretty day. Seafair Sunday, one of the best days of the year. Heat 3B of the Chevy Cup at Seafair is brought to you by Car Toys. Car Toys, a better way to go and a proud sponsor of Seafair. And is presented by Seafair, celebrating 60 years. So Heat 3B just about upon us, and here are the storylines we'll be following. J.W. Myers in the Haas Mortgage. He was a happy Heat winner. Can he make it two in a row? And how about Steve David in the sausage boat? Oh boy, Alberto, he's in that battle with Dave Vilwak. And finally, Jeff Bernard. We keep waiting for him to sneak up in the formula boat. Is this his time? Here we go, the lineup from Muckleshoot Casino for this Heat 3B. The Haas Mortgage Boat inside, oh boy, Alberto, formulaboats.com, Whirlpool, Miss Albert Lee, and then that Graham trucking boat with J. Michael Kelly at the controls. Take you out to the course, and there you go. The boats are in the process of finding their way around, and the temperatures just keep climbing here on the shores of Lake Washington, up to 85 degrees, but the wind has calmed just a little bit. A little bit of light chop, though, out on that water, and we'd like to welcome in all those listeners on KJR Radio and those of you listening to us on CairoTV.com, anywhere in the world. Welcome to you. Mike Fitzsimmons, Pat O'Day, along with Chip Hanauer and yours truly, Steve Rabel, getting set for Unlimited Heat 3B. Let's take a look at the drivers. In the Haas Mortgage Investors Boat Chip, it's J.W. Myers. Oh, but J.W. Myers right now has to get a good second or first place finish to get in the final for sure. Jenny, how are they feeling down in the pits about this uh, coming heat? Oh, they're cool, calm, and collected, guys. JW is in the cockpit making jokes to the crew. They're all having a good laugh. They put the thing down on him, and he went off all smiles. All right. In the old boy Alberto boat, the defending national champ, Steve David has a couple of second places. Mike, can he break through here? He can indeed, and he had the uh, points uh, over uh, JW, so he made a choice to go to lane number two. I think he wants to see what uh, Dave Vilwak discovered earlier in the day in the second lane and see if he can run around a fast boat from there. Guard, none more experienced in this race than Steve David. Oh, you got that right. He's ready to go. So is the crew. They set up for rough waters and just being down here in their pit, I could really start to feel the wind. But this was something kind of funny. They want to stay out of the carnage. They say the Graham boat, the Formula boat, and the Haas boat, they say they're a bunch of show-offs. They like to go fast and sometimes a little too reckless. They don't want to get involved in any of that. They just want to score some points. Oh, my. Well, this might be one of those show-offs here, perhaps. The Formula boats, Jeff Bernard, he is fast, Chip, and he is young. I have to agree. I think Jeff Bernard has to be mature as a driver and think about when it pays to go fast and when it doesn't. I don't think he's learned that quite yet. Brian Perkins hasn't had a lot of luck this uh, week so far. A couple of third places, but he needs to get those speeds up if he really wants to compete, Mike. And that's not going to happen this afternoon. The boat, as uh, we've mentioned earlier, is carrying about 700 extra pounds, but he's going to give a good accounting of himself. This is a fine race boat driver, and when he gets a good boat under him, look out. We talked to J. Michael Kelly during the course of this week with his 
brand new baby and girlfriend by his side. They were scared to death after what happened uh, in Tri-Cities a week ago, but they've got the boat running well, and Jay Michael's a good driver. He's an excellent driver. I think Jay Michael Kelly may have more natural, God-given ability than anybody out there, but he needs a little break now. So let's see if he gets it here in Heat 3B as we're a minute and a half away from the start. Again, all of the boats making their way back to the south turn. And then they're going to work their way down that stretch, back stretch, and get themselves into position in their lanes, Jim. You know, we talk about something called parallel rollers, and parallel rollers are waves that come off the log boom, which is out here, and they just line up as the boats go down the straightaway. What happens is the sponson gets on either side of those rollers. So if you get a sponson on one side and the other on the other, it's actually like it's in a ditch, and it starts to steer itself. So it's very difficult. What you're seeing right now with boats going that slow, that's very difficult. Even though he's going slow, the boat just doesn't want to steer. And when we're talking about going fast, it's difficult, Pat O'Day, to go fast when you have those parallel rollers and you've got the fastest for us. And that Jack in the Box congratulates the fastest qualifier in Alberto's The Jerky Boat. Steve David jerked it around the course in qualifications at 152.5. Now, Jack in the Box will never jerk you around. You get anything on the menu any time of day. They're at the floating bridge turn and Mike Fitzsimmons. Thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, JW was just up there way, way too early. And uh, so he had to come way down on throttle, as we uh, pointed out to you. He's now ratcheting up again, but he'll have the inside lane advantage. The real test here is whether or not Stephen David, with a quick boat inside, which JW is driving, is going to uh, be something that he can drive around from the two lane because there's a possibility he'll be seeing Mr. Vilwak in that lane pretty soon. Here they come to the start and finish line, and they're across the line. We'll wait and see whether that's an illegal start uh, from the official standpoint. But we've got a whole lot of horsepower coming down into that first corner, and it looks as though Steve David leaves just the lane uh, and is going to take the advantage from lane two. Although it was a legal start, it was not a fast start. As a driver, you've got two jobs. One is to get to the line on time, which they did, but also to get to the line with as much boat speed as you can. They didn't have a lot of boat speed. Well, out of the corner, uh, he's going to have to be faster than that lane, too, if he gets it in the final heat. Steve David will have to be. But right now, J.W. Myers is in his mirrors and giving him no quarter at the present time. And coming up on the outside is Jeff Bernard with the formula boats.com. He's staying in the thick of it as well in the uh, three lane on the outside. Okay, coming down to the start finish line at the end of lap number one, it's going to be the old boy, old Berto, Stephen David, still fighting that national championship fight uh, in this heat as well. He comes across the line first path of speed. 138 for Steve David, 135 for J.W. Myers. So they're not going blistering fast here right now, and that's probably uh, due to some good strategy although J.W. doesn't want to let him go yet, uh, Chip. He's staying right with him. J.W. Myers' biggest fan right now is Dave Vilwak because if J.W. Myers beats Alberto, that probably gives Dave Vilwak to pick a lane for the final. So Alberto has got to stay in front of the Haas boat if they want to pick, have lane pick for the final. And you know, for a rusty driver, J.W. is driving a pretty good race here right now. He's staying right up with Steve David, and they're both coming through that corner a lot faster than they did the last time. In fact, J.W. got a beautiful turn out of that one. He lost a little space, however, they got pretty close together there. What you're seeing is a little desperation there. Steve was being pretty friendly there when he thought he had a lot of boat, could just go around him, but now you see him cinch down and make him turn a tighter corner. So Steve David realizes how much is at stake here, and he cannot let J. Dub beat him here. End of lap number two, Steve David's still out in front as they go through that lower corner. Pat was speed that time. Hey, he's picking it up, 143 miles an hour that time. Right? He said, JW's after me. I better get on that throttle. Yeah, JW is still after him because he isn't going to let go right now. That Haas Mortgage Investors boat is in this thing for sure. JW is going to keep the hammer down into this corner for sure. He thinks maybe he can uh, take the measure of that Alberto boat from the inside here. What a good tight corner by JW Meyer. Let's hope he can hold that skid fin in and doesn't jump sideways because he'd be right in the rooster tail. Oh, good corner also by Stephen David. Nice and tight. I don't think there was any encroachment, but the boats did get pretty close. Here comes Steve David flying that boat across the start finish line for the checkered flag in the old boy Alberto. Right behind him, J.W. Myers in the Haas Mortgage Investors. What uh, what yeah, 143 miles an hour on that last lap. What happened in that last corner is they came off the exit pin, the last buoy of the corner. Steve gave him what they call a hip check. You know, he looked like he was going wide, but then he came in real quick, and you'll see that the J.W. Myers had to turn left quickly to, to hold his lane. So Steve David really worked hard because there was a lot at stake. 
Yeah, he, he pretty much had to put him into the boards there just he to did. be sure he could sew, sew this one up. He did. And uh, that's exactly what he did. A legal move. He was. A legal move. Good boat racing. But not, a, but not a Steve David typical move. When you see Steve be that aggressive, you know he knows there's a lot at stake. Uh, Steve is usually the most gentlemanly driver out there, but right there he had his hands full and he yep. needed to make sure that J.W. Myers didn't get that victory. The order of finish was the Alberto, followed by the Haas Mortgage. Number three was Graham Trucking, and fourth place went to uh, Albert Lee Appliance, number 48, U48 with Brian Perkins. So now, of course, it comes down to numbers to see who has the best overall score through three standards and uh, makes a determination as to what lane they're going to start in between the Elam, of course, and the Alberto. And that is a little drama yet to come to make those sorts of choices. A little bit of a disappointment. Jeff Bernard was in it for about a lap and a half, but he kind of gave uh, gave the rest of them uh, plenty of room after that and satisfied himself with third place. I think we're going to get a chance to look at that hip check we talked about it as a come off the corner what they do is they come off the corner here and normally Steve David would just give him a ton of room there but Steve David came off and then kind of went like this and poor JW really had to veer and when you have to veer it really kills the uh, the speed because you want to keep the boat momentum right, here so here comes. they come around here and he's giving them plenty of room plenty of room now watch we'll see an aerial shot here I think is now look at him kind of cinch it up and JW has to really grab a lot of left you see that big swerve he did right there yeah, he had 35 40 feet of space between the buoy and the Oberto, so he gave him plenty. He gave no, him plenty of room. Here's a room. Now watch the aerial view. Watch the arc that Steve David has, and watch it change here at the end. And watch what it does to uh, J, uh, JW here. They come around the corner. Whoop! He's getting awfully close here, so he had to veer back, and now there's that room between them. That probably cost JW about seven or eight miles an hour, and ensured the oh boy Oberto victory. And that's a veteran driver. It's a veteran driver doing a very clean but aggressive move. Uh, Steve David never does that stuff unless he has to, and I think he had to. And in this in this particular case, JW learned a little uh, something from uh, from that situation. I guarantee he won't put himself in that position again. Yeah, he, you know, JW, he hasn't raced for over a year, I believe, and he just got pulled off the top of a roof. He has a roofing business. So I think just now he's finding his race legs, you know, because when you're pulled out of obscurity and you haven't been working out all year and you haven't been thinking about racing, uh, it's hard to just jump in a boat. But you can see he's pretty darn happy there. And, well, he should be. Uh, an unofficial second-place finish as Steve David is either waiting to make a swan dive. No, that's right. He's waiting to catch the line. But, it but didn't he quite get Well, yeah. didn't quite get to him either and uh, he's our age so to be in that boat when i say our age i'm talking about chip and me he's upwards in his in his 50s now and, and still driving very well right maybe there maybe there's hope for me yeah, i know no, there's no hope for me but perhaps for you so that is again your unofficial winner right there steve david in the oh boy alberto the sausage boat remember he came in here a couple of years and won it on uh, Art Alberto's 80th yes. birthday. What a great weekend that was for the Alberto family. And let's head down to Jenny now, who's in the pits with J.W. Myers, and congratulations, J.W., on a great second place finish. Yeah, congratulations, J.W., on that second place finish. Thank you. Uh, it was a lot of work. Steve's fat, got a fast boat over there, but, uh, you know, we're more worried about later this afternoon for the final, but, you know, he races good and hard, but, you know, but clean, so it's the way we like to race, you know, American family and Haas Mortgage come on board to help us out with this, so, you know, I got a great race team, as I said, many times over, and, you know, with Jean here and kind of standing next to uh, Scott when, you know, from the radio crowd helping me out. Well, you got two behind you now. Uh, anything new you're going to pull out of your bag of tricks for the final? Yeah, we're going to try some things. I just want to give a uh, shout out to my friends. Uh, Butch and um, Darlene Morgan, they lost their son the other night, and just thinking about them. Great, thanks. I'm sure they're watching, and back to you guys. Well, that, that does kind of bring a little bit of, uh, make a little bit of a sober moment here in, in what is usually just a great party, and oftentimes, Chip, as you know, a lot of these guys, we talk about them as having ice water in their veins, but these are just folks. These are just people. And let me also say that racing, for some reason, brings your emotions to the surface. Um, things are funnier. Things are sadder because I think there's so much intensity. That intensity brings your emotions right to the surface of your skin, and you can see the effect that has. Well, here's a guy that's intense and a great driver nonetheless, and he is the, our unofficial winner. He's with guard. That's Steve David.
Well, Steve, you got to tell me that that heat right there, it almost looked like it was the final besides having an orange boat in there. That's the kind of heat that Old Boy Alberta wants, really. Great racing with Haas Mortgage Investors. Uh, J-Dub and team of uh, Gene Threat gave us a great race, but the Old Boy Alberta is, is really set up to win this thing. This final is going to be really something. I mean, I think the fans have seen the kind of competition the sport is raised to with the help of people like Alberto and the Elstroms and Haas Mortgage Investors and, and the Formula guys. I mean, the sport's never been in better health and better competitive spirit. It was almost like you guys had to win to get those points, so maybe finish second in, in total points. Yeah, we're, uh, unfortunately, that last heat had Graham gotten past uh, Elam would be tops and points in the day, but uh, as it is, uh, Dave, I think, has only gained 35 points for the weekend for the national chase. In the final, it's whether he chooses lane one or two. Uh, we'll see where he goes, but uh, it's going to be a barn burner. These guys are just going to set this thing to rapid go. You're liking it right now, aren't you? Oh, man, I, I'm at a time of life. I'm 55 and at my peak. I just, I get better and better. I feel like a fine Cabernet, <laughs> which, by the way, they're drinking right now in the Alberto backyard oh, watching good. the races. So, great day for Art and Dorothy. None for you until you're finished racing today. Yeah, and I don't drink either, although that may help as I get older. <laughs> All right, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Gard. I think Steve David thanks, really Steve. has it dialed in just right. That, that A nice fine Cabernet is uh, just about right. Uh, so here are your unofficial results from Heat 3B, and it's been some great racing so far this weekend. The Oboy Alberto, the Haas Mortgage Investors American Family Insurance, FormulaBoats.com, Graham Trucking, and the Miss Albert Lee. Heat 3B of the Chevy Cup at Seafair has been brought to you by Car Toys. Car Toys, a better way to go and a proud sponsor of Seafair. Congratulations to Steve David and the old boy Alberto, the Geico, Geico photo finish winner of Heat 3B. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Call Geico at 1-800-947-AUTO or visit us at geico.com. When Mike Fitzsimmons isn't busy doing his call-in radio show in Spokane or doing hydroplane racing on the radio and television, he's tweeting. I know that for a fact. Really? Can't get enough. Big tweeter? He's a huge... You, you've been around my bird feeder? He's a huge tweeter, is he? And listen, we've got from Ryan on Twitter, he's asking a question, and Ryan, thank you for this, and I'll put it to our uh, our resident champion driver here, Chip uh, Hanauer. What is the difference between piston-powered engines and most other hydros like the Elam and the Alberta? Well, the piston is just like your car. It's got pistons that go up and down to turn a crankshaft, which turns a drive shaft. A turbine is a jet engine, but instead of blowing the thrust out the back, it blows the thrust past a windmill. That windmill turns a shaft to a gearbox and turns a propeller. So the piston uses uh, piston power. The turbine takes force, takes thrust, and turns it into mechanical horsepower. But they both turn a propeller. A lot of people are fooled. They see the big exhaust pipe and the heat. There's no thrust. That's just heat. It's all propeller driven. And for those who are real novices, it was the piston powers first to the turbine powers of late. That's a piston you're looking at there. That's exactly right. It's a World War II Allison. And it ran a pretty fast lap here a bit earlier. We'll see what it does later on. So there, thank you for the tweet from Ryan. Come on back, we'll talk more, answer more of your tweets, and we have more racing and the Key Bank Air Show still to come. A gentleman who has seen every seafair since the beginning the voice of Seafair for so many years. Pat O'Day, you're an institution. You know every amazing moment that has occurred, and you've chronicled them all right here, haven't you? Well, there have been so many amazing moments during these great Seafair celebrations over the last 60 years, but chronologically, when it comes to shock and amazement, I think going way back, the Boeing first jet airliner. The 707 prototype was doing a flyby here, flown by test pilot Tex Johnson, when he did a barrel roll over the course, stunning the Northwest and the world. Next year, when we undoubtedly see the 787 flyby, I doubt that Scott Carson, Boeing commercial airline president, will let them do a barrel roll over the course. Now, 1958, Bill Muncy, driving the favorite Miss Swiftway, he's in the lead when the boat loses the rudder and it crashes into a Coast Guard boat. Both boats head for the bottom of the lake with a crewman who'd been asleep in his bunk down below, squeezing through a hole in the side just at the last minute as the boat was going down, narrowly averting death. 
there has been death on this course in the past. A sad event and a rather bizarre twist to it. Jerry Bangs, a Seattle attorney and driver of the Squire Shops, hooked violently in the south turn, was thrown out of the boat, fatally injured. The strange twist was, as we watched the boat, the engine kept running, and without its driver, sadly circled that tragic scene. A few years passed, and uh, a new hydroplane arrived on the scene. Uh, a new concept that it was riding on four points with uh, two sort of outrigger hulls. The very first Elam developed by the Elstrom family. It had qualified and was being tested for greater speed when on Sunday morning, just before the heats began, it went airborne. It climbed higher in the sky. Watch this now. It went higher in the sky than any other hydroplane before. Smacking into the water with tremendous force, it ripped the entire front, leaving the driver hanging from his seat belt. Now he recovered from his injuries, and of course Elam has gone on to build some of the greatest boats in the entire sports history. But what a sight that was. Look at that, just amazing. Here's a great one. The fans loved it. Mark Evans flipped his Pico American uh, Dream over at 100 miles an hour early in the day. Check this. As he backs out through the safety hatch, having been upside down, but come on, Mark. Stat there you are. Wave to the crowd. But Now, here's what made history. That very boat was taken to the pits where the crew worked feverishly, repaired it in time for the final. How does the story end? Mark Evans went upside down and then went to victory that same day in the same boat and got the checkered flag. <laughs> Look at him as winner of that year's Seafair Trophy. And here's one not to be forgotten. The Elam skips out of control in the south turn, lands smack on top of the Budweiser, then takes a piggyback ride on top of the now disabled Bud all the way to the log boom where everyone ducked. But the boats had slowed to a point where no further damage was done. But wow, what a sight. And as we celebrate Seafair's 60th, we just know there are more great moments coming. All right, Pat O'Day, thank you. And I, I remember even some of those moments. They were spectacular, and you make them even better, Patrick. Thank you. Before we uh, get to our next guest, we're going to head down to the awards ceremony for heats 3A and 3B of the Unlimited. Here is Jeff Randall. Thank you, Steve. Here we are at the Chevrolet Cup Awards stage, and we've got the Unlimited Hydroplane Heat 3A. Our winner was Dave Vilwak in the Elstrom Elam Plus, and to make the presentation, Heat 3A was sponsored by Tulalo Resort Casino, the number one place to stay and play. We've got Amy Williams to make the presentation. Amy? All right. On behalf of Tulalo Resort Casino, I would like to congratulate Dave Vilwak and Elstrom Elam Plus. Thank you very much. Wow, you know... Uh, Chip and I both got a lot of paychecks from the casinos, and, and uh, a lot of, not a lot of people can say that. Uh, we raced for Circus Circus for a number of years, and we really appreciate the Tilala people uh, coming on and helping this race and helping us do this and sponsoring this heat. Thank you so much. It's good to have you involved. Amy and Dave, thank you very much. Hey, as long as we're up here, I'm going to ask you guys to step off. We're going to move on. We've also got the winner of Heat 3B. This heat presented by Boost Mobile, and the winner is Steve David in the Old Boy Alberto. Steve, come on over here. And Boost Mobile has sent Nicole McKinney to make the presentation. Boost Mobile, by the way, unlimited talk, text, walkie-talkie, and web for only $50. All right, Nicole, let's make the presentation. <laughs> on behalf of Boost Mobile, we'd like to congratulate Steve, David, and the Oboy Oberto team on winning Unlimited 3B. Thanks, Nicole, so much. We appreciate Boost Mobile. Thanks, all of you, to Art and Dorothy Oberto, and thank you. All the men and women that work for the Alberta organization on my team, thank you so much for this possibility. This final is going to be a barn burner. I'm going to put Vilwak in the garage. <laughs> well, the gauntlet has been thrown down from the Chevrolet Cup Awards stage. Steve, back to you. We have a very special moment here in the pits on the shores of Lake Washington. The American Boat Racing Association, ABRA as it's known, is about to officially now sign the deal that will take these racers from our shores halfway across the world. Sam Cole with ABRA is about set to do the honors. Thank you very much and thank all of you for being here today. This is a historic moment for boat racing. 
With me is uh, Sheikh Hassan Althani, the president of the Qatar Marine Sports Federation. Sheikh, welcome to Seattle. I know you've been here for a few days. Uh, have you enjoyed yourself? Yes, yes, indeed. I mean, the weather is just perfect. Just reminds me of home. But um, you know, uh, the the event is just you know just excellent. And this is the first time for me attending the um, the Unlimited. And uh, you know, I'm fortunate to be in the Northwest here. You know, the venue is excellent. It, you know, the setup is just impressive. Are you, by the way, I was gonna, you're a very accomplished offshore powerboat racer. Are you ready to uh, drive one of these boats? I don't know. I, I may not comment on TV right now, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Something may, may happen. Well, this is a very monumental occasion. We're about to sign an agreement that will take 10 unlimited hydroplanes to Doha, Qatar, November 12th through 14th of 2009 for the UIM Oryx Cup World Championship. One of the most beautiful venues I think that we've ever seen. Uh, Dr. Ken Muscatel was with me. It's a fantastic venue, and I know we're looking forward to a great event over there, aren't we? Oh yes, indeed. We cannot wait, um, you know, to get those boats uh, in Doha and race in Doha Bay, and uh, you know, draw more crowds. Uh, we're in Doha, uh, Qatar, and NQMSF. We try to um, be the pioneers in terms of uh, the marine sports and, and power boating, of course, and uh, adding the uh, unlimited to our calendar this year. I think it will give us an, uh, the target that we want to reach uh, for 2009. Super. Well, let's uh, get the formalities out of the way, and I'll ask you to uh, sign each copy. So Doha, here we come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could you do the handshake on you? Sure. There you see truly a historic Steve? moment. Steve? Oh. I appreciate it, Sam. Thanks very much. As you can see from high above here, those weren't just the signees. All the teams involved were there as well. And now you're looking at pictures of Doha Cutter. This is where, this is the bay where the performance, where the boat race will take place in Doha, Qatar, and it is a magnificent setting in a part of the world that in some ways has seen, many ways has seen its share of problems, but on this day and in November, it is going to be the site of American hydroplane racing, and a number of teams are going over. It is a huge boost for this sport to make this an international event. And it is going to be something spectacular over there. I've got to talk to my news director as we speak about getting an opportunity to go over there and talk about this boat race, although I think I'm a little busy with the Seahawk coverage at that time. But there you see the venue. It is going to be great racing. And a lot of these teams are really, really excited about heading over there. It's going to be a full weekend of racing a number of different classes of boats the speed boats the cig cigarette boats as they're called hydroplanes and all the rest it's going to be terrific and of course we'll have the pictures from there and bring that to you as it happens in uh, in qatar